Greetings, Earthlings. Check out what I have here. These are six 18650 lithium ion batteries. And uh, how I got these batteries uh, was, is, is pretty interesting. Uh, Mom had bought a replacement battery for her laptop on eBay, and it was dead on arrival. It did not work at all. And uh, she got her money back for it, and she didn't have to send it back, so she just gave it to me to do whatever I wanted to do with it. And I let it sit for a couple of months until I got an idea, hey, why don't I rip it open? <laughs> Maybe there's some 18650 cells inside, and I was right. I tore it open, and uh, I got six of these cells. Uh, they were all in good shape, sitting at 3.5 volts, that was good. And uh, I charged them all up, and they all charged up great, and... Uh, all six of these cells seem to be absolutely perfect. I would say the reason the battery itself did not work was because of an electronic problem. 18650 lithium ion cells, they're probably one of the most popular batteries in the world uh, right now. They're used in everything, laptop batteries, battery packs for other things, and they're really popular for hobbyists, people who make uh, remote controlled vehicles and e-cigarettes and stuff like that. Of course, lithium-ion is the superior technology. It's all around better than any other rechargeable battery chemistry in the world. It's got a better power density. They're uh, more reliable. They usually have better short circuit current. They can handle more charges and they last longer and just about everything. Uh, they don't take abuse as kindly as other technologies like lead-acid batteries or NICAD batteries, but uh, as long as whatever you want to use them for doesn't involve abuse, then uh, uh, lithium-ion is by, by and large the best rechargeable battery technology in the world. So after getting a hold of these batteries and seeing that they all work just fine, I had a pretty cool idea. This is the battery out of the Acer Travelmate 233LC. As you may remember, after I had accidentally killed the Travelmate a couple of years ago, I had left it sitting unplugged for a year or so until I subsequently fixed it. And uh, as a result of that sitting unplugged of it being charged, this battery does not work at all anymore. The laptop does not try to charge it at all. So I figured why not tear this thing apart, maybe I can find more 18650 cells and we can see if uh, I can get the cells themselves working again. Now this is a 14.8 volt battery which means there's probably uh, four cells inside there. Uh, well, there might be eight. Can you squeeze eight in there? Nah, there must be four in there. Assuming it uses, it actually uses 18650s, it might be a completely different type of cell. But uh, I did some reading after I got these batteries working. I did some reading about uh, lithium ion cells and I think I might have found a reason why this battery just suddenly quit working. See, the nominal voltage of a lithium ion cell is 3.7 volts. Maximum charge voltage is 4.2 volts, and there's a lot of gray area as to what can be considered a, uh, a discharge voltage. Some people charge them when they reach as high as uh, 3.6. Others wait until they're around, you know, just 3 volts or whatever. Some, you know, some more ambitious people, they run these down all the way down to like 2.7 or 2.8 volts, and uh, some. Uh, lithium ion cells actually have a, a built-in uh, circuit. They have a circuit board right inside them with a low voltage protection circuit. And what that does is if the battery reaches too low of a voltage, uh, on some batteries uh, this voltage is 2.75 volts, on some it's as low as 2.5 volts, but if the voltage gets too low, that low voltage protection circuit kicks in and disables the battery. Um, I'm not sure if it permanently disables it or if it'll work again after you charge it, but uh, it keeps the battery from being able to be used anymore. And there's a very good reason for that. Uh, as I said, lithium ion uh, does not tolerate abuse. They can be quite dangerous if you don't treat them right. And uh, certainly one of those uh, treatments is making sure the battery stays at the right voltage and gets the right voltage when you charge it and such. And uh, a lithium ion cell has kind of a quirk in that if the voltage gets too low, you can't just charge it back up and expect it to work again. It doesn't work that way. If uh, the voltage gets too low in a lithium ion cell, it can cause quite severe damage to the cell. And if you try to charge a cell that is too discharged, uh, the cell can actually end up shorting out 
And of course, if you leave it on the charger when it's shorted out, it could catch on fire. So, uh, yeah, that's why at least some of these cells, I doubt these ones here do, but some 18650 cells, as well as other lithium ion cells, they have built in under voltage protection. Because uh, you can't just throw them on a charger if they've been over discharged. So I have a feeling that what might have happened with this battery is if the cells themselves doesn't, if the cells themselves do not have it, this battery might have a built in under voltage protection circuit. When I had the laptop sitting unused and unplugged for a year, uh, the cells got too low of a voltage and this battery just disabled itself and that's why it won't charge anymore. So. What I'm going to do in this video is, we're going to tear this battery open. Now I'd like to think that I could actually tear this thing open and perhaps put new cells in it, seal it back up and use it. But just based on that other battery I took apart to get these cells and just about every other laptop battery I've ever seen, that's probably not possible. This thing's probably going to be destroyed as a result of my opening it, but uh, whatever. We'll do it anyway. Now this part here, which sits flush with the case of the laptop, that can come off, however it does. There, just like that. I'll save this part, and uh, here's the battery itself. So, what I'll do is I'll just, uh, I'll grab a knife or something and uh, just start hacking away at this battery and see what we get. Well, get a load of this. I start beating the battery with uh, a hammer because I just could not get a knife in the groove to pry it open. Check this out. I just beat it a couple of times and I never thought of this. The label actually comes up and I see a battery in there. Wow. Oh man. I think this might have eight cells. Holy crap. Oh, uh, well they might or might not be 18650s. Look at that. Nah, surely that can't be. Well, yes by God, this could be an 8 cell battery. Holy crap. Look at that. Wow. It's almost like Tetris. They did a heck of a job designing that. 8 cells in a pack this size. So what I should be able to do is just uh, pry the rest of this plastic up. We got pink cells, that's cool. <laughs> Okay, time to get wire cutters. I always use wire cutters to cut inappropriate things. Yeah, they are 18650s. Holy crap. I did not think they could stuff eight of them in there. Cool. If I can get them working, that's a good lot of uh, cells. Here's where we're at so far. I guess if I really was uh, crafty enough, I could replace the cells in this battery and it would be usable because I haven't had to destroy the battery itself. Well, I'll keep working till I've freed all the cells. Well, I got all the plastic removed. I guess the only thing to do now is uh, try and pry these cells up. Might have to break something here. There, there's one cell free. Now I'll, uh, I'll haul out the rest. By the look at the batteries, by the looks of the batteries case here, I would say this, <laughs> Yeah, this battery's a write-off, so I won't attempt trying to save it. I'll never use the travel made on battery power again anyway. And without too much effort, we have eight burgundy red 18650 cells. That's pretty darn cool. And uh, I read the label that was on the battery, and it said four amp hours, so evidently each of these batteries was originally two amp hours of capacity. Here's a little circuit board that was on the end of the battery. A lot of stuff going on there. And uh, this cell right here displays something that, uh, nope, not this one, this one, displays something that kind of slightly worries me. If you look right there, it's got kind of a, uh, a brown residue. Not sure what's up there. But anyway, what I'm going to do is grab my multimeter. I still have the setup here from when I charge the uh, green cells. And we're going to see the voltage that each of these cells are at. Don't need this anymore. So I'm kind of uh, kind of interested to see where these are. Where these cells are at. Alright, for cell number one we have whoa, absolutely nothing. 0.0, .0 volts. That's not a good start. See cell number two. Same, flat line. Wow. 
Was not expecting this for some reason, but I guess I should have. Cell number three. We have life. We have 2.2 volts. Cell number four. Same 2.2 volts. Cell number five. Nothing. Cell number six. Nothing. Cell number seven. Nothing. Cell number eight. Nothing. Wow. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit of an adventure on our hands. We have two cells that uh, are definitely uh, capable of being restored. 2.2 volts shouldn't be too hard to uh, get them charged up. But the other six, abs of freaking lootly nothing. 0, 0.00 volts. Now, as I said, uh, you cannot treat an overly discharged lithium ion cell like a regular cell and just throw it on a charger. You can't do that. But uh, with these overly discharged cells, it is capable to charge them back up but you have to be very careful in doing so what you do is you put this on a charger and give it the absolute smallest amount of current you can just give them the tiniest amount of voltage and get them charging extremely slowly with an extremely small amount of current I'm talking like 10 milliamps and then uh, once the cell hits a sizable voltage say one and a half volts you can increase the current a bit say 100 milliamps and then uh, once the cell hits 3 volts, if it does, if it's uh, actually coming back to life, then you can hit it with the full current uh, with a cell of this capacity. Uh, regular charge current would be probably an amp or an amp and a half. But uh, once it hits 3 volts, you can consider it stable and uh, hit it with full charge current. But right now, these 6 cells are completely unstable. These 2 cells are partially stable, and we've got to treat all of them uh, very gently. So, what I'm going to do now is, I'm really curious, I'll, I'll start with the ones at zero here. I'll take one of these, and uh, we will throw it on my uh, power supply, and uh, we'll get the ball rolling, seeing if any of these will come back to life. Alright, since I'm too poor to have a nice variable, variable uh, voltage power supply, I've got the next best, best thing. This is a Compact Desk Pro EN power supply. I have the battery charging off it from the 3.3 volt rail with an incandescent light bulb in series to limit the current uh, this is a 7.5 watt unit so current should be limited to only a few milliamps so uh, yeah if you don't have a variable, variable voltage power supply a medium base socket and a wide selection of incandescent lamps make uh, for a nice variable voltage effect this multimeter is going to be displaying the current going into the battery this multimeter is going to display the voltage. Let's uh, see what we get. Okay, we're getting zero milliamps of current. So the only thing is, while we're getting no current, we are getting voltage, which means probably the only thing drawing current is uh, this multimeter to measure the voltage. Well, this is certainly weird. I've uh, heard of lithium ion cells short circuiting but uh, I've never heard of them going open circuit which is definitely what this battery appears to be doing well I tried all six of these cells and I cannot get them to take a lick of current I tried hooking them straight up to 12 volts and uh, they did not take a single milliamp of current um, it occurred to me the reason is these probably have that under voltage protection built in them they reached too low of a voltage and the protection kicked in and permanently disabled the batteries that's too bad I'll do some reading online to see if there's some way to disable them to disable the protection but uh, until then let's try these last two batteries which show a glimmer of hope they're at 2.2 volts alright got it hooked up there's our voltage the batteries uh, putting out just over a milliamp of current because it's already connected to the power supply. Got our seven and a half watt light bulb. Let's see what we get. A uh, bit more current than I'd like, but it's certainly taking it. And voltage is going up. There you go. Looks like we have a uh, a salvageable battery. So I'll just let that sit there until it hits, say, three volts or so, and. Uh, then I'll up the current a bit, and there you go. So, while this battery's charging, I'll see if I can do anything about those open circuit ones. Well, it's a couple weeks later. Um, it turns out that uh, those six cells which were open circuit, 
uh, these cells are actually not protected. The reason those cells are open circuit is simply from physical degradation, or I guess you, you'd call it chemical degradation. They literally, simply, just went open circuit. I, uh, I spoke to another YouTuber who is very versed in dealing with these types of batteries, and uh, they've actually had them go open circuit before. But yeah, a, protection, a protected cell would actually have the protection circuitry externally uh, mounted on the negative end of the battery. Protection circuitry is never sealed inside the case itself. So yeah, those batteries just simply got bad enough that they went open circuit. But these two here, I charged them up and they charged up just fine. I charged them up to 4.2 volts. That was a couple weeks ago. Let's see what they're at now. If they're good, they shouldn't have gone down too much. This one is 4.05 volts. Looks good to me. And the other one is 4.1 volts. So yeah, we have two good cells here. So I now have a total of eight 18650 cells. So there you go. That's my folly with uh, 18650 cells. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.